students welcome back in the previous class we are discussing the patterns of biodiversity and we have discussed one pattern that is lanuinal gradient in this class we will discuss one more pattern of biodiversity that is species area relationship so this is very very important for your examination let us study about species area relationship and this was actually explained by a german naturalist and a geographer named as alexander von humboldt a scientist or we can say he is a naturalist and a geographer named as alexander von humboldt so he was a person and as he is a naturalist and geographer he used to learn about the different uncultivated areas especially he used to explore or uh, while exploring the wilderness in the south american jungles you know south america in south america the amazon rainforest is also located so that you can expect maximum biodiversity in south america he used to study the different varieties of species in that uh, south america and while exploring exploring is nothing but he used to learn about the different uncultivated regions in the south american jungles yeah while exploring the wilderness in south american jungles he found that within a region within a region the species richness increases with increasing explored area so what is it is uh, alexander von humboldt he found that within a region the species richness increases with uh, increasing explored area but up to certain limit this is very very important up to certain limit the species richness can be increased with the increase in area let us take one example to understand this one if for example so this is a one particular geographical area and in this land area there are about 100 different varieties of species just imagine in this particular land area or geographical area there are about 100 species so what happens if you increase the land area or geographical area so when the geographical area or land area is increasing you are providing the space for new species so that this can accommodate about 200 different varieties of species so what exactly i am saying here with the increase in area the species richness also increases because you are providing the place for the evolution of new species but there is a limitation up to certain limit only we can uh, we can expect the species richness see as i said here in this region there are there are about 200 species can accommodate but you cannot accommodate a thousand species in the in this particular region so what happens if you include the thousand species in that uh, congested area so at that time here the organisms will be struggling for their existence so where is azar species taking place that's why here the species richness increases with increased increase in explored area when you explore or when you increase the area the species richness also increases but to up to certain limit and this relationship the relationship between the species richness relationship between species richness and area area for a wide variety of taxa let us imagine the wide variety of taxa like for example angiospermic plants you can imagine in this particular area only angiospermic plants there are birds bats aquatic fishes etc so we are including the wide variety of taxa when we relate the species richness and area for those wide variety of taxa it turns to be a rectangular hyperbola so here you can look at the graph here we have planted area versus the species richness so here you can imagine so for example here when you are when this is the area so we can expect the species richness is like this again when you increase the land area the species richness is also increasing the curve or the line can up 
marks or it will be increasing. Why it is increasing? With the increase in area, the species richness is also increasing. And this relationship between the species richness and area, it turns to be a rectangular hyperbola. You are familiar with all these in your mathematics. So it turns to be a rectangular hyperbola and here this curve represents the rectangular hyperbola and which can be described as S is equal to C A to the power Z. I will tell you what it all is. So for this curve, for this rectangular hyperbola, it is described as S is equal to C A to the power Z. But on the logarithmic scale, when we are considering the logarithmic scale, so on logarithmic scale, this relationship between species richness and area, it is usually a straight line or we can say it is linear. Generally, the relationship between species richness and area, it is usually a rectangular hyperbola. But on logarithmic scale, this relationship is a straight line and this straight line can be described as log s is equal to log c plus z log a. So, on logarithmic scale, the relationship can be described as log S is equal to log C plus Z log A. So this equation is very very important. Here S indicates species richness. So here S indicates species richness. And A indicates area. Then C indicates Y intercept. Y indicates, sorry, C indicates Y intercept and Z, this is important, so Z indicates the slope of line or it can also be called as regression coefficient. Regression coefficient. Try to understand. Here we are uh, plotting the graph for the relationship between species richness and area. So it is usually a rectangular hyperbola. On logarithmic scale, it is usually a straight line and described as log s is equal to log c plus z log a. So here s indicates species richness, a indicates area, c indicates y intercept and z indicates the slope of line or regression coefficient. So this is important. This is what uh, it should be calculated. The value of z is very very important and ecologists uh, they discovered that ecologists uh, they discovered that the value of z the value of z it lies between the range of 0 0.1 to 0 0.2 and it is regardless of the taxonomic groups or the region. So without considering the taxonomic group, I, I mean to say here specific group of taxa or specific regions are not considered irrespective of or regardless of the taxonomic group and the region the value of z ranges from 0.1 to 0.2 and as I said for example irrespective of or regardless of the various taxonomic group of for example we can consider the plants in Britain plants in Britain birds in California birds in California and mollusks in New York so we are not considering the specific group of organisms irrespective of taxonomic group for example plants in Britain, birds in California, mollusks in New York. So whatever the organisms we are considering we can expect the regression, low, the regression line or the slope of line it is amazingly similar. So what type of graph we are expecting here same type of graph or same type of slope of line can be expected when we consider the irrespective group of taxonomic groups. And when we analyze a very large area, when we are analyzing this species area relationship among a very large area, very large area in the sense we can consider
consider the entire continent. So not like a Britain, not like a California. Here we are considering the species area relationship among the very large area like the entire continent. So when we consider the entire continent, we found that we found that the slope of line or the regression coefficient it is much steeper. Much steeper. I mean to say here we are considering a small area. When we consider or when we analyze a, a large area like entire continent, the slope of line will be much steeper and the value of z ranges from 0 0.6 to 1.2. When we are considering only the entire continent, the slope of line is steeper and steeper in the sense it will be increasing, maybe it comes near to perpendicular and the value of z range from 0 0.6 to 1.2. And we can take one more example, for example, for fruviorus. Fruviorus means fruit eating. So you may have seen the fruit eating birds and mammals. Yeah, for fruitivores or fruit eating birds and mammals, uh, the slope of line or the regression coefficient is found to be the value of z is found to be 1.15. So this is uh, the value of z in case of fruitivores, birds and mammals. Here you can imagine if the value of z is 1.15, you can expect how many number of species. Uh, are they especially we are taking the fruitivores birds and mammals especially in the tropical region or in the tropical forest of different continents we are not considering a single continent we are considering these birds and mammals in the tropical forest of different continents so here in different continents the number of fruitivores are more and the value of z is found to be 1.15. So again we can say it is much steeper than that. So there the value was 0.6 to 1.2. Here again the value is increased which means the slope of line is much steeper. So only this much we can able to study about the species area relationship. It is very important. Try to understand. Let me explain once again. So here the species area relationship. Here a German naturalist and a geographer named as Alexander von Humboldt. He while exploring the wilderness in the South American jungles, he found that within a region the species richness increases with the increase in explored area but up to a certain limit. This is very very important. The species richness increases with increase in area but up to certain limit. And the relationship between species richness and area for a wide variety of taxa it turns to be a rectangular hyperbola which is represented as s is equal to c a to the power z. But on logarithmic scale it is usually a straight line and it is described as log s is equal to log c plus z log a. Here s indicates species richness, a indicates area and c indicates y intercept whereas z indicates the slope of line or regression coefficient. And ecologists they discovered that the value of z is found to be 0 0.1 to 0 0.2 irrespective of or regardless of taxonomic group. As I said, plants in Britain, birds in California, mollusks in New York, the slope of line is usually similar. But when we analyze a, a large area, when we analyze the species area relationship among the large area like the entire continent, we can see that or we can find that the slope of line or regression coefficient, it is much steeper with the Z value 0.6 to 1.2. And for fruitivores or fruit eating birds and mammals in the tropical forest of different continents, here again the slope of line is much steeper with the z value 1.15. So with this graph we can understand that.
With the increase in area, the species richness is increasing, but up to certain limit. So this completes the species area relationship. Now we will discuss few objective questions related to the today's class. See the first question, that is this question. Species area relationship was given by option A, British zoologist and geographer uh, David Tillman. Option B, German botanist and geographer Alexander von Humboldt. Option C, German naturalist and geographer Alexander von Humboldt. Option D, British naturalist and geographer Alexander von Humboldt. You know, Alexander von Humboldt, a German naturalist and geographer. Option C is correct. Then 37th question, the observation of the species area relationship was given by Humboldt. After his pioneering and extensive exploration in the wilderness of Option A, South American jungles Option B, North American jungles Option C, South African jungles Option D, East African jungles So here, he explored the wilderness in South American jungles Option A Then, 38th question The relation between species richness and area for a wide variety of taxa turns out to be A. Option A, rectangular parabola. Option B, rectangular hyperbola. Option C, straight line. Option D, sigma. So here it turns to be a rectangular hyperbola. Option B is correct. Next question number 40. The species area relationship on a logarithmic scale it is Option A, rectangular parabola. Option B, rectangular hyperbola. Option C, straight line. Option D, sigma. So here, generally it is a rectangular hyperbola, but on logarithm scale, it is a straight line. So option C is correct. So this completes the species area relationship. We will continue with the next class. Thank you.